This is Jim Duffy of Refining Fire Chilies. My website is www.superhotchilies.com. We carry over 490 varieties of chili seeds. And during the season for plants, April through August, we sell about 140 varieties of chili plants. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you setting up a tray for germinating seeds using Promix, Promix soil as the soil you plant in. But I'm going to show you my technique. You're looking right now at a tray that has 264 cells. Now, only in the last 48 hours, I made a decision, call it an idea, call it redneck engineering, to figure out a way to use a 288 cell tray in a 1020 reservoir tray. What you're seeing here, <clears throat> which I only thought of two days ago, I don't know why I didn't think of this years ago. See, because as a business, I want to start as many seeds as I possibly can in a short amount of time for my growing, which is growing plants to produce seed. Now, I have a nursery, professional nursery, that grows millions of starter plants for large nurseries. I'm their smallest client, probably. And they start all my plants for plant sales. But I like to get a jump on things, and I like to start my plants for my, my personal growing for my seed and plant business. So the more I can start in a limited amount of space I have indoors in my house and my garage, because that's all I've got. I don't have a big greenhouse. I don't have a, a warehouse. I've got to start everything here where I live. So I've been using, when I do pro mix soil, a 128 cell tray. It's called 128 cell. And it fits perfectly snug in this reservoir tray called a 1020. And I buy all these trays, by the way, from Greenhouse Megastore online. But I have 288 cell trays. The problem is they don't fit. So professional greenhouses use them, but they've got automated setups and stuff like that that I don't have. And I want a tray that's going to fit in the tray because then it's going to stay nice and warm and I'm going to get a better germination rate on my seeds. So what did I do? I cut out one row of this 288 cell tray, which gives me 11 rows of 24 squares, 24 cells. And then I trimmed a little bit of the edges, that edge there and this edge there, and it fits down the bottom. And then I add about a half an inch of water in the bottom the day before. I've already put my pro mix soil in the cells. And then I add about a half inch of water, stick it in the 1020 tray. I do this with a 128 cell as well. I stick it in the water. I let it sit for a day. I let the soil or the mix, the pro mix, soak up that water and get nice and moist in preparation for planting the seeds the following day. So in the 128 cells, they're deeper and there's more soil. They hold more soil because they're bigger cells. The good thing, snow is so Hold on a second. The TV just went kooky. So, <clears throat> and you can use purified water for starting your seeds. I like to boil water and get the chlorine out, boil it for about an hour. Well, it doesn't boil for an hour, but I put it on the stove for an hour. And that gets most of the chlorine out for just seed starting, not for my growing. Chlorinated water, uh, filtering water and doing all that with the amount of growing I do, I don't have the time and the money for a system to do that. So just thought I'd add that in there. So for starting my seeds, you can let your water sit in buckets for three or four days and the chlorine will naturally evaporate. Or you can boil it out, you know, 20, 25 minutes at full boil, we'll get it out. Or you can just buy purified water. Or if you've got a reverse osmosis system. I'm just saying when you start seeds and they're baby seedlings, the cleaner and purer the water is, it's probably better off. I don't know if that's scientifically proven or not, but 
I'm just throwing that out there. So, whether I have a 128 cell that's going to sit in this reservoir, which fits perfect, or a 288 cell, which when I cut down the edges a little bit and take out one of these rows, it fits perfect, which I've never thought of doing. And I don't know why in all the years I've been growing, I never thought of doing that. <clears throat> you add water in the bottom after you put, after you load your tray with soil. You add water in the bottom, let it wick it up, soak it up, get nice and moist. And then the following day you plant your seeds. Okay? You got that? So, if you've noticed, I have multiple, multiple, multiple seeds per cell. Now, this is not for you. When I germinate seeds for my growing, <coughs> I don't want to put one seed per cell and then go, oh my God, I didn't get enough to come up. Now I got to plant another tray. So I just load, I, since I have plenty of seeds, which, you know, some of you don't because you have to buy your packets of seeds. And these are seeds from my growing. Most of them are. Some I did buy, but I bought in larger quantity. I'm going to put a lot of seeds per cell. So I increase the odds of getting more up the first time around. Because I don't have time for do-overs when I'm trying to get a few thousand plants started and grown in a few months. So that's why I got multiple seeds. Okay? <clears throat> now, the other thing I want to point out is before I put the seeds in each cell, I push down the moist soil with my finger to make a depression. Because I want it to be like a little cup that catches the seeds. I don't want it level with the top of the tray. Because then when I put seeds in, they could maybe bounce off that soil and go into the wrong cell. Now I have a written map. And here is an example. This is tray number three. And row one is Korean. Row two is Lava Scorpion. Row three is Loose Shower. Paprika. Libasopful. Mini Paprika. MOA Red. Now... I have a label here. This is tray four. This isn't tray three. Anyway, <clears throat> so my first row is the furthest away from my label. And then row two, and then three, and then four, and then five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So my map will tell me what I have. Exactly. Now, <clears throat> in this particular tray, we have 24 cells per row. Now, I realize you might not want to start 24 of one variety. You might not. So what you can do is like you can go like I did here. One, row 7 in tray 4, 1 through 12, starting left to right is Petite Marseille. And row and then the remainder of row 7, 13 cell through 24 is Papa Dreddy Scotch Bonnet. So this way you're only planting 12 cells. So you can divide it up. Just make sure you're careful to put your seeds in the right spot and document it on a sheet of paper like I have here. Because if you don't, that's when you can have problems. Now, a friend of mine, Micah Kennedy, who's a grower in Alabama, who I respect and we're friends, we talk about growing all the time, <coughs> gave me another idea tonight. Because when I was planting these last two trays, you know, I got to be very, very careful that I don't drop seeds in the wrong cell. So I start from here and I work my way back. So if seeds fall in a back row, well, you're not going to mix up with another seed because there's nothing in that row yet. But what about if my seeds slip out of my hand a little bit and bounce into the row that's already been planted? That's a problem. So what my friend suggested is, that I take a little piece of cardboard here to block, you know, three or four rows back. That way, if a seed slips out of my hand, it'll bounce onto the cardboard and won't bounce into a cell that already has some seeds of another variety in it. Smart idea. I never thought of it. Just like I didn't think of chopping down this 288 cell tray and make it a 264 cell tray so it could fit into the bottom of my 1020 tray. 1020 tray is a reservoir. Now, a little bit about 1020 trays. Greenhouse Mega Store, I think, has four types. They have the cheap, flimsy type. You'll save a few bucks. 
and they have the extra heavy duty type. It's better for you to buy a 25 pack of the extra heavy duty type. Now you're not going to use 25 in one year, but you know the heavy duty ones, unless you step on them or drop them and bang them against something, are going to probably last a lifetime. So you'll have some extras. It's a few bucks more for the heavy duty, but you might as well buy a pack of 25, share them with a friend or two, or just keep a few in the garage. You know, if you're going to be growing the next 20 years, you'll probably use all of them. Okay. So this is a 1020 tray. It's a reservoir. So now before I put the seeds in these cells, even though the soil was nice and moist, I added about another half inch of water to the tray below it. This way I've got a little bit of water for this to wick up. Now I'm not going to lift up this tray to show you the water below it because I've got seeds in it and I don't want the seeds to pop out. So now that I've got my seeds in the cells and I've got them labeled on my chart and they're moist and they're ready to go, the next step is to cover them. Now I could cover them with soil, but I'm going to cover them with vermiculite and I'm going to show you why. Hold on a second. Now a lot of seed starting greenhouses will cover their seed trays with vermiculite. Don't make the mistake of buying the very coarse vermiculite. You want to get the fine vermiculite. It does promote faster root seed and root growth. It also pre prevents fungus and algae from growing on the top of your trays. And it's also very soft and easy for the seeds to pop through. Pepper seedlings are very fragile. And the softer the soil that they grow in when they start out, the easier it is. That's why I don't like peat pellets. Peat pellets are very, very dense, and your seeds have to fight through them. And some of those root plugs that people start indoors in, they're okay, but some of them are too dense. And then again, your little tiny seedling that has fragile roots is trying to work harder to push through and develop. So the ProMix soil mix, this is ProMix BX, with mycorrhiza, and you don't need the one with mycorrhiza because mycorrhiza is not necessary for seed starting or it won't harm it. It's more beneficial for root growth. So when you transplant your seedlings into small pots, that's when you want to add some mycorrhiza. And I use Extreme Gardening Granular Mycorrhiza. There's other brands out there like Great White, whatever one you want to get, closer to you, cheaper for you. They're all good. So I bought, I started off with a coarser vermiculite which is lumpier and chunkier. And this is a finer, more powdery vermiculite. And this is what I'm going to cover my tray with. Okay? So, I got this on Amazon about 16 bucks, And it's a big bag, so it's going to probably last me about two years of doing seed trays. Because I'm only going to coat that little indentation in the trays where the seeds are sitting in. That's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I do it very, very gently. Because I don't want to like drop it onto the seeds from, you know, really hard. Because I don't want to make seeds bounce out of their square or their cell and bounce into the wrong cell. Because now I've got the wrong seeds growing in the wrong row. So what I do is I'm just going to gently very, very gently and slowly fill up the cells with vermiculite. You following me? Okay? Gently. Okay? Okay. Now my whole tray is covered. I filled in those little indentations in the cells with vermiculite. Now it doesn't matter if it's a 128 cell tray or another cell tray that you get that fits in the 1020 tray. The main thing is it fits inside the 1020 tray and it can pull water up from the bottom, okay? Now, now that I have everything covered, and in some areas you notice I have a little bit more vermiculite than I do with others. It's not an exact science of filling it up. The big greenhouses probably have machinery that does it, but I did this by hand. So now the next thing you wanna do is you want to moisten the vermiculite. Now what I've done is I have a spray bottle that I have a diluted chamomile tea or you could use black tea as a mixture. Now on my grow sheets, which I'm going to edit in the future, 
I mentioned about soaking in chamomile tea or black tea because that kills fungus that might be on the seeds or bacteria from pepper material that stays stuck to the seeds when it gets wet. It also prevents fungus and also softens the seed a little bit and aids in germination. Now, I've been doing that before, but I don't do it now. So what I do now is, instead of soaking the seeds in a, in a tea mixture, and you can if you want, but with the amount of seeds I have to deal with, it's really a pain in the butt to handle wet seeds and plant them. So what I do is, after I cover my tray with the vermiculite, is I soak the seeds with the tea mixture with a spray bottle. You know, I go very, very gently at first, going back and forth across the tray. And the reason why I'm going gently is I don't want to push full force on the trigger on the spray bottle and blow the vermiculite out of the hole while it's dry, because it's dry, right? So it can blow away easy. But once it gets wet, it'll be fine. So if you just took the spray bottle and blew on it as hard as you could, you could blow the vermiculite and the seeds out of the cells they're sitting in. So the thing is, take your time, just like when, you put the, the, when you're putting the seeds in the cells, you take your time putting the seeds in the cells, being careful not to put the wrong seeds in the wrong cell or the wrong row. You take your time. You make sure the little kids and animals are away. Don't try to watch your favorite TV show. Take your time, focus, pay attention to what you're doing because a mistake is going to have you growing the wrong variety or labeling the wrong variety and then you'll find out later on in the season and be pissed off because you won't know what the hell you got because you, miss, you, you messed up on your tray. And again, if you have a map and you keep a copy of it in a safe place, You'll know exactly what's in that tray. You don't have to label and tag every little hole or cell. That is silly. So now that I've misted it pretty good, the vermiculite is wet. And the vermiculite is making, has the tea mixture. And that tea mixture is moistening on the seeds. So I'm kind of doing my soaking of the seeds in the tray instead of soaking them in a liquid solution and then after soaking them in a liquid solution, trying to handle wet seeds and planting them, which is a pain. So I'm doing my chamomile tea soak in the tray because the first few days the seeds are going to be, what, soaking. So this is why I don't soak anymore in a separate container. I do it in here. So now it's pretty moist. I can spray a little bit more frequently. Get it nice and wet. Now, if you have a 128 cell tray, it's very easy to pull up the end and put water in the bottom. You want to keep an eye on it. You always want to have a little bit of water in the bottom. When it starts to dry out, add another half inch of water so you keep your, your cells moist for your seed to germinate. Not muddy, but moist. Now, because this tray here fits so tight in here, it's going to be very difficult to take this modified 288 tray, which is now a 264 tray, because I trimmed it down. It's going to be very difficult to, to pull it up and maybe have an accident and dump some of the tray. So what I'm going to have to do with this tray now is like every two days, I'm going to have to mist it down thoroughly to keep it moist. It's going to be a little more work, but... What's paying off is I have 24 times 11 cells instead of 128, which is a lot more cells. So I'm, I'm germinating more in the same space where I would be germinating less. So that's my choice. You may never even grow this many varieties. You may not even use this. So a 128 cell would be perfect for you. So now you can buy the 1020 reservoirs which is the tray this is sitting in at Greenhouse Megastore Online. You can buy the 128 cell trays, which you can fill up with the soil. You can get the vermiculite on Amazon, get the fine grained or fine vermiculite on Amazon. You can get the Pro Mix, usually at a lot of nurseries, have them all over the country. 
or hydroponic stores. I wouldn't want to order it online because if you order a bale, it's pretty damn heavy. It's probably going to cost you a fortune for shipping. So I would probably not do that. Okay, so now we're good to go. We've got 264 cells loaded with seeds. They're soaking in chamomile tea. They're ready to go. So we're going to put our humidity dome cover. And I like to use vented 2-inch humidity domes. You can buy these at Greenhouse Mega Store. This one I didn't buy there. And it's got two vents. The one from Greenhouse Mega Store has one vent. Regardless, it's a nice 2-inch dome. And this is what I start with. And uh, baby's at home. <laughs> so now we're good to go. This is going to go on a heat mat. The heat mat I prefer is Super Sprouter. You can buy them on Amazon. You can buy one that fits one 1020 tray, two, three, or four. I think they even have one for six. So instead of buying multiple heat mats, if you're going to do multiple trays, you can get one and one thermostat. I recommend a thermostat. Set your thermostat to 82 to 86 degrees. <clears throat> and what I do, because my house gets a little cool at night, what I do to kind of keep the heat in for my trays is I cover my trays with a Mylar blanket. Now, I don't use the lighting, which is a King LED 1500 watt, until they start sprouting. I also put a, a Mylar blanket underneath my heat mat to help insulate the heat from going into my kitchen counter when I want it to go to my trays. So I, you can set it to 82 to 85 degrees on your thermostat. Right now, it's running at about 85.1. And then usually anywhere from like six days, depending on the seed variety, to three weeks, you'll get some seeds to sprout, and then you can transplant them into your soil pots. I don't grow in these trays plants to a large size. Once these plants start sprouting, I get them out of there a few, about a week after they sprout because I want to get them into the soil where I can feed them and get them growing. Okay, so this is setting up germinating of chili seeds with ProMix, in a 1020 reservoir with a 264 cell tray, you can use a 128 cell tray or another tray that'll fit in there with a humidity dome on a heat mat. Super Sprouter heat mat is the brand I prefer. They last years with a thermostat 82 to 85 degrees. Okay. And you should get nice healthy plants out of that. Now I'm going to show you a 128 cell tray. I've shown it in a previous video when I was transplanting. But I'm going to show you one right now, real quick, before we end this video. Here is a 128 cell tray that I started. Pro Mix, covered with vermiculite. And here's the 128 cell. You can see they're deeper and hold more soil than the other one. But they fit snugly into the 1020 tray. Okay? So same thing, just less cells, more soil in the cells. You can grow the plants a little bigger in these. As you can see, we have some a little bit bigger over here. Okay, this is Jim Duffy of Refining Fire Chilies. And here's some plants we transplanted about five weeks ago that were this tiny, and now they're this big. And we got the lights going here at nighttime. So, that's about it. You guys take care. And I hope I didn't talk too long, which I did. It's over 20 minutes, but I hope you've learned something from this and you do well at your growing. Take care.